This is Sildenafil, aka Viagra, aka Blue Pill, and this is a tropical mint sweet. I'm sure you've heard so many stories about this, uh, the tropical mint sweet, and I'm sure you've also heard uh, several stories about Colgate, and we're going to see them uh, in a few. But then, let's narrow down to uh, this one. It's one of the most common drugs used in uh, treating erectile dysfunction in men. It's quite common, but it's very easy for you to note that uh, this is for treating that if you see this in someone's pocket you'll definitely know that they are treating or they are struggling with their erectile dysfunction then we have this one which is still the same but this is a i don't know if you can see focus so this is a jelly so it functions the same so what you do is you just consume the jelly so this jelly will contain sildenafil and it will give you the same effects with uh, the pills the blue pills. Today we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction and uh, it's quite common in men and uh, actually it affects everyone. Once you become affected as a man, it means that even the woman of the house will be affected. So it's quite common, like I said, and before you get uh, to some of the figures here and there, it's uh, inability to get an erection and keep it. And it's accompanied by low sex drive. So around 1995, um, around 152 million men are affected by this condition. But it's actually projected by 2025, 322 million men will be affected by this. So it's a growing curve, so it's keep growing. And we have so many factors, we're not going to go to that, because today it will be more specific. I'm going to go into how Sildenafil works, and also some of the maids around, are like the switch, uh, the Colgate, how they do or what they do to attain an erection, all that, yeah? So for us to understand how everything comes together, we need to understand how an erection happens. And this is very important for you to understand because this is where you'll see where the drugs will come in or some of this will come in. And uh, yeah, I have a pen here. So I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to show you how that happens. So first of all, we are going to involve several things. The brains will have that. There's something you call stimuli. By now you understand what a stimuli is. And also we're going to involve the structure of the penis and uh, some few times here and there, try to ignore them in as much as they are, they are very essential. So just keep with me for you to understand the whole thing. Even the tropical rate will come in. But if we get there, first of all, this is a human being. We are going to assume this is a human being. And uh, this is where the brains are. Now the brains will be connected through the nervous system to the penis. So I'm going to draw it here. Is it visible? Yeah, I think you can see. I don't know whether the camera is focusing. I don't have a camera person anyway so this is the glance so this is the line that i'm going to use to cut it into two so that you get to see the structure so the structure will be like that but before you get there it's important for you to know that they are connected together by nerves so what we have here is something we call stimuli stimuli is uh, something is a signal which is sent to the to the brains and then we still have um now the action of the brains that will come and uh, induce something here. Now, let's go to the stimuli. There are several. One, we have physical. Physical is just touch. Someone's touching you, you get aroused. Uh, we have uh, abstract. Um, I'll, I'll call it abstract because this one, you can, it's you thinking. You, you thought about it or maybe you saw, uh, maybe you are watching some erotic videos or maybe someone who is dressed in a certain way or whatever made you think about it. So by seeing or thinking about it, that's still a signal because it will go to the brain, so it will be processed and then uh, that will happen. Also, do you see that morning alarm that usually wake you up with a boner? So still that one will give you an erection. So we have the brains, very important. We have uh, the physical, or the uh, we have the physical, which is the touch. And also we have uh, now the perception you saw, or maybe you thought about it, so you get an erection. What happens is that signal got to the brain, it was processed, and then the brains will send a signal all the way to here. Now, for us to know what's happening here for you to get an erection, because that's where now we'll get to understand how the drugs will work, the sildenafil, and uh, also, yeah, we have so many other types of drugs that will be there. We call them PDE5 inhibitors. We're going to know what, what those are, because we're going to come to some of those terms. Now, the structure of the penis will be, we are going to cut it into two, and this is what we are going to get. This is a cross-section. You're going to get... We are going to ignore everything else. We are going to focus on these three. Now, this one, in between, you are going to get your urethra. 
this here which is surrounding the urethra we call it cs now this is corpus spongiosum corpus spongiosum because this is almost spongy and there is a reason why it's spongy and also we have this corpora calvinosum so this one we have two of them here this side and this one they are responsible for you getting the erection because they have chambers inside them kind of some grooves and uh, vessels which are wide and uh, they accommodate blood by blood getting into them that's when you get an erection now this is now the mechanism of how this happens you see you have the brains there was a trigger which went to the brain and then all of a sudden there's a signal that now comes to uh, the individual cells here what happens here is the brains or the signal will uh, initiate production of what you call nitric oxide no now this is what will now trigger production of something we call c g m p cyclic guanosine monophosphate now this is what will now trigger this now do you remember we, we talked about the chambers and the vessels it will trigger them to the something called vasodilation vasodilation is the, the enlargement so by enlarging it creates like a space that will suck blood off from uh, the other um, from your body and that blood will get inside here and once it inflates the chambers you get an erection so this is cgmp very important actually very important for you because it is the one that usually initiates um uh, the erection and also at the same time it makes you sustain that erection for long so if you are targeting to keep an erection or even get an erection cgmp is actually important but then this is not actually that important because now you cannot keep an erection for long than necessary so you keep it as long as it's required anytime it's not required then you need to get rid of it and what does that happen or what happens for you to lose that erection there is another thing which is usually produced to counter the effect of cgmp called this one that we said here pde5 now this will come and inhibit the function of cgmp now remember cgmp the function is to make sure that uh, now it, there's vasodilation so blood is coming in meaning that something happens here pd5 comes uh, it starts to reduce the effect of cgmp what happens is you don't have something that will sustain that um, erection so over time it dies off so that's why if you want to target erection if you want to keep erection for long you'll have to have uh, uh, this pde5 inhibited or not there at all so that the action of cgmp will continue being there and will be felt so you take uh, vega 5 60 minutes before any activity and it's there now does it work yes it does because it inhibits this meaning that in case you have an issue with uh, the communication so the nervous system sorry it looks very crowded but i know you can still follow this is the brain if, it, if there is um a disconnect in the nervous system it means that uh, you cannot even using um, your sildenafil will not affect anything you're not going to get an erection or uh anything from uh, the brains even from the stimuli all the way up to where we have cgmp if up to this point you have an issue even in the production of nitric oxide or cgmp you cannot be helped by your viagra it can't help you but if for example you're getting an erection for some few minutes and then it dies off that means that you usually uh, you produce cgmp and uh vega 5 can help you this is viagra still then if you have so many of them which are usually uh pd5 inhibitors they are there you can google there are so many now in summary here you have the stimuli that will instruct the brains and then there will be a signal that will be sent to your penis and now in the penis uh, there will be production of nitric oxide nitric oxide will lead to production of cgmp cyclic guanosine monophosphate and this is what now will uh, now vasodilate the vessels making them larger accommodate more blood and this is where you're going to get now that erection now to maintain that erection you're going to have um, uh, to inhibit pd5 okay before you get to inhibition for you to keep that erection you'll have to make sure that the cgmp is not affected because it's the one that's keeping the erection pd5 is produced to counter the effect of this for you to yeah you don't need erection anymore like at that point you are done and uh, by the way uh, this is purely anecdotal so many people usually say that um, they are able to ejaculate because they are thinking of someone else or they are thinking of a scenario that was giving them 
an erection or maybe they are thinking about their ex. Now, the narrative um, behind this is if you can keep uh, the stimuli, you know, stimuli is external, it's coming into the brain, interpreted, and then that signal will be sent to the penis. So if you can keep this stimuli, which can be through imagination, you're imagining about someone else, or maybe you've seen people watching porn and uh, at the same time that's when uh, for them to maintain this. So they are seeing that, or maybe you're perceiving that they're thinking about someone else, and that's when they're able to maintain that erection and continue what they're doing at that moment if whatever they're doing is story for another day uh, so that's how they're able to maintain that so so long as this signal keeps coming you're producing nitric oxide you can be able to uh, keep that erection for long because now nitric oxide will lead to the production of cgmp i know by now you have a good clear picture and by now you understand that now uh, Vega 5 or maybe whichever PD5 like the one that I've shown you is uh, sildenafil will come here to keep uh, this here to be high and inhibit the action of PD5 because this is what will now break down the CGMP. By now we understand the mechanism. Now let's go to several other things yeah. I think it's now safe for me to grab everything here. Now Let's go to tropical. Remember, we said uh, there is this part we call the glands. Very important. This one is the one that contains a lot of nerves and this is most of the time the one that is responsible for your ejaculation because the friction around this point, we have, you have so many nerves. Now we have two kind of people. We have those with our foreskin and those without. If you don't have a foreskin, due to you rubbing against your clothes, it becomes a little bit desensitized but you still have the nerves. If you have the foreskin, this is totally a by the way, it's not even affecting what you're going to talk about here. If you have a, a foreskin, it's more sensitive. Now let's go to our products here. We have tropical sweets. We have striped seals. I'm sure uh, as I list them down, you remember <laughs> where you saw that uh, narrative. You have toothpaste. There is ginger and all that. Now look at something common in them. Like if you go to tropical sweets, the one which they usually use has mint in it. So we have strepsil as either mint or camphor in it. Camphor. We have toothpaste, it has mint. Meaning that you can easily use mint to achieve the same thing. And uh, what's happening? So, like I said, you have so many nerves here. There, there are so many, we have so many nerves endings here. So when you use mint here, it is sensitizes, it increases the sensitization of the nerves that you have here. Now, increasing the stimuli, this is the stimuli that will go to the brains. Remember the, remember the brains. So it will sensitize the brain that you have here. And this is what now will come here in the, to, to induce the production of NO, which will in turn lead to CGMP. Do you see now the connection? So this is just for sensitization of this area. And uh, so, do you, can you combine this or is it recommended? Me, I don't recommend that. I don't, I don't recommend it. Now, can you combine this with a drug like Viagra? Now, remember, this is purely functioning on the stimuli side. So this one, you know, it's not long lasting, so it's not going to be sustained for long. Meaning that uh, once the sensitization goes, then the, the, there is a shortage of the stimuli. And if it's cut short, it means that even the brain will stop now sending the signal to for the production of the NO. Now, is it possible to have this? Like if you over sensitize this place here and then you take our sildenafil, uh, or you start first of all because this will go for 60 minutes. You take the, this before any activity and then uh, well, when you're close to the activity then uh, maybe you use any of this. What will happen is here yeah, you already have sildenafil so there will be that. It will take uh, that message to the brains and uh, this message will come and then get here and then we are going to inhibit PD5 that usually inhibit the action of CGMP so you can sustain this for long. But then Remember, you have to keep this coming, meaning that either you'll have to keep the mint going on if this is the only driving factor that you have at that moment. So you'll have to keep it coming all through, all the time.
Anyway, I hope you got something. I've seen people using even something like uh, ginger and uh, like the toothpaste you're talking about here. You don't know the actual other uh, adverse effects that it will give you. So one thing I usually tell someone, instead of using acildenafil, because this is a prescription drug, make sure nothing else is working because they say something that you might become dependent on. So you end up not being able to get an erection or sustain an erection unless you use sildenafil or maybe those drugs that you need to use for you to get an erection. So it's very important for you if you are young out there, you occasionally, maybe once in a while, get an issue with your erection. It's quite normal to get an ED because they have varying uh, intensities but if you are getting out of a hundred erections 50 of them are affected then it's a high time you go see a doctor it's very important for you to go see a urologist so that they get to understand what actually is happening so that they get to give you who to be long lasting because maintaining an erection naturally is the best thing see you in the next video